Oh, let me ask you, what do you think about her doing the Asian accent? Okay. And two thirds of the House of Dry is back for more because why? We need an effing job. Hi, Rock. Yuhua, do you know why I called you into HR today? Why? Um, there have been multiple complaints about excessive loudness from you. Do you think you're too loud in the workplace? No, I'm just having in the workroom because I need to release some stress. Okay, you can go. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, you can go. Get out of here. Oh, fun fact. Did you know that HR is hired only to protect the company, but not the employees themselves? Oh, yeah, for sure. If you guys are out there and you're like, oh, HR is there to protect me. No, they're there to protect the company for being sued. So definitely get a civil lawyer if you ever have any cases. And if I ever show up at your job doing the interview, don't ask me why I'm here. I'm just very passionate about putting food on my table, okay? That's my answer. What do I bring to the new company? A new employee. Well, anyway, what do you think about this episode of RuPaul's Drag Race? Make opinions. Did y'all know that where you live affects what contents are streaming on your services? This video is sponsored by Surfshark, an award-winning VPN, a virtual private network. What is Surfshark? So where you live affects what streams on your services. For example, if you live in the UK, down under, Asia, or anywhere in the world, our friends cannot watch what we watch, and vice versa, ranging from movies, documentaries, TV shows, and more. But with Surfshark, you can change your location and access all the contents that you deserve. That is so cool and easy. It is absolutely safe to use, even on public Wi-Fi. And with one subscription, you and your friends can use it in multiple rooms, on multiple devices, and you just pay one price only. I'm going to sign up right now. So what are you waiting for? Go to the link in the description and use my code to get an extra three months free with Surfshark. Plus, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose too. Now, I'm about to switch my location to the UK to see what our friends are watching. Click. Oh my goodness. There's so many missing content while living in the USA. Ugh. I actually thought this episode was pretty cute. I like the challenge. Doing the whole PowerPoint thing was pretty fun and we've never done anything like that. We get to see how good the girls are with like multimedia comedy. I'm just glad it's not like another sewing challenge. <laughs> we've had three. Yeah, well three in a season is enough. Yeah, well, you know, the sewing challenges are for Nymphia, so. Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure. I was very upset when Plasma went home. Yeah, she was set up by Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she set herself up for having bad taste. Well, anyway, the category for this runway is 1980s drag con. I'm not looking for a meet and greet look. I'm not looking for a panel look. I'm looking for a pink carpet look. So there's a lot of quintessential things from the 80s. You could be looking for 80s fashion. For me, I'm looking for any sort of iconography, whether it's a reference to a person or a reference to a silhouette that reads 80s. And if I can see it in another time period, then it's kind of a no for me. Oh, I thought it was really hilarious when Michelle said that Morphe's look reminded her of Dolly Parton. <laughs> She's right though! That was exactly what I was thinking too. Yeah, the French at the bottom, right? Yes. Anyways, who stood out to you in the challenge? And who didn't? The people that stood out to me in the challenge were Plain Jane and Q. Their stuff was really well written. It was well executed. Everything was so funny. They kept it within a workplace atmosphere, which was kind of the challenge. So the fact that Q didn't win, this is the time I'm like, oh, okay, well, maybe I'm with her this time. Actually, let's talk about the winner for this episode. Do you agree it was the correct winner? I think it should have been Q. For me, I'm a huge Safira stan. I feel like she's been robbed of other challenges before, but I feel like uh, she didn't win this episode for me. Safira was yeah. safe. I don't know. Can you imagine like you're so visibly gagged, you get back and she's like, but I'm gagged. <laughs> Her face was ready to fight. I thought she was gonna throw a tantrum on the stage and be like, what the f group? One thing about the challenge I do wanna talk about, Michelle kept saying, yeah, your presentation wasn't the funniest. I honestly thought it was the funniest out of all of them. Uh, which one? Q and Plain Janes, mm -hmm. the first one. I honestly thought that was the funniest out of all of them. It was presented in such a hilarious manner. It started off well, and it kept the momentum all the way through. So she was like, it's not funny. I enjoyed it because it was funny and there were no hiccups in the presentation, whereas I feel like in the other ones, there were hiccups. Well, some of them a little bit more than the others. So if you fumble like morphine and she's like, oh, drag queen flopping. I thought that was fine. I thought though. it was good too. Yeah, I thought that was fine. I thought it would have been good if she was like, 
Well, another thing that's not on the slides is our public school education has failed all of us. Well, anyways, <laughs> moving right along. Category is 1980s Dracon. We first up have Plain Jane. It's very CEO, very executive. I think the silhouette is fine, though I would like the shoulders a little bit more broader because I feel like she does have broader shoulders than intended for this outfit. But overall, I would have added maybe a purse, a hat, maybe a train in the back like Q to exaggerate it a little bit more because it's a little bit pulled back for Drag Race. I would love for her to serve a pink carpet look than a meet and greet look. Really quick before I start getting into it, were you supposed to show it on your screen too? Oh, you do not see it? I'm sorry. No, I don't see it. I'm so sorry. This it's is okay. boat like opinions, y'all. I'm just like, uh-huh, uh -huh. yeah, um, I agree. I did it one time with another queen <laughs> for two thirds of the video. She was just like guessing the looks. At one point I was talking to her. I was like, do you see this? Did you see this? She was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, girl, for 40 minutes, you didn't say anything. What the f If you see something or if you don't see something, say something. Okay, so now that I can see it in front of me, it could be a pink carpet look from like the boob up. From the bottom, it definitely reads very office worker, but I'm not getting 80s office worker. I feel like a pencil skirt could have also been very 80s. I agree with you with the shoulders mm -hmm. and the hat. Um, and a purse, something. Yeah. Okay. And that is yeah. the bootleg opinion from Rock. <laughs> Since Plane didn't give us anything this week, we have nothing to offer to. <laughs> no. <laughs> Um, one thing that I learned from school with graphic designing that I apply with designing garments is, or making a look, is you always have to fill up all the spaces, fill up all the gaps. If you feel like you can do more, always do more. For example, the hat, the matching earrings would have helped too, a purse, something, you know what I mean? Oh, because you can always dress it down, then dress it. Yeah, you have to fill up all the spaces on the flyer or like a poster or something like that. And she didn't fill up all those spaces for me. Also, for some reason, the picture that you picked, it feels like Bendela Creme. I didn't pick this photo, girl. It was great shot. She needs like a belt too, like maybe a dark purple belt. Oh, a belt would have been very 80s. Or maybe even just 80s hair, you know what I mean? This is not 80s hair to me. Yeah. Like Safira, like something really big, you know, very teased out. That would have worked too, because I know she's going for like an office worker, executive sort of thing, but like people in the 80s in the office had big hair. For me, this looks like very modern still, except the print is a little bit 80s. Yeah. Yeah, plain, give us nothing today. <laughs> All right, up next to the runway, we have Q, and she's in this beautiful red outfit that is very personal to her. Her outfit today is inspired by Keith Haring, who is a very prominent artist from the 80s who is very active in the in the active activism. You know, he helped gay people. He threw the first brick. <laughs> yeah, he threw the first brick at Stonewall that killed nobody. Q. <laughs> But anyways, I do like this outfit. I love the way that the color is up. She took your advice preemptively and has giant, giant shoulders. And it looks really good with the silhouette and it reads more 80s. The only thing is I feel like the hair could have been more 80s. Am I crazy? Yeah. Overall, I think it's good. For me, the silhouette is fine too. Yeah, the shoulders are great. The red popping out is great. It represents her story. And the train in the back is great too. And she has a little bow in the back. This is fabulous. Love it. Love it. I don't think I've really seen any costumes from her where she's really flopped. Last week, girl. <laughs> the lavender one. Oh, I didn't watch last week. Oh. Was it bad? Um, her look was safe, I thought, but it just didn't make sense. It has like fringe at the hat. It's serving country. It's serving VMA. It's serving dance I'm costumes. I'm gonna take a look at it later. It was a bunch of things put together. I would have liked each piece separately, but it just didn't make sense. I want to see what you're talking about. Next up is Dawn in a fun Dracon look. Actually, I have mixed feelings about this one. In one hand, it's Dawn, right? But on the other hand, I feel like it's a bunch of things thrown together. I wish that I understood the reference a bit more because RuPaul really seems to like it. From my perspective, where the suspenders are, it completely cuts her shape. Mm -hmm. Like it's right where it cinches in. So it looks like she's a square box. The elements I do like are up. So I love the hair with the mask and I love the shoes. Something about the middle is missing for me. It's the blue for me that threw it off. I think if she did black, I would have liked it better. So it seems like she has this really fuchsia, purplish, pinkish hair standing out with the gloves. It just seems like a leotard with tights, shoes, a top. 
some it does feel a little funky, though. Now that I'm looking at it, I do like the blue. I think that the blue is an interesting addition of color. So it's not just black purple. It's got like a little bit of like 80s fun to it. There's a lot of 80s stuff that just has eclectic colors, you know? I would have liked it better if the leotard was black, but the sleepless jacket that she has on the top was blue. I would have liked that switched. Oh, okay. You know, we can still have that fun that. color. Let's say, because the past few weeks, her runways were very strong yeah. and has a very strong point of view, whereas I feel like this is, you know, is this the yeah. best I feel like she can deliver for a drag con look? Probably not. Yeah, I think it just needs a little zhuzhing and then it could be ready for a drag con look. It needs an extra bit of drama. Mm -hmm. Next up, we have Maya Iman LePage. Did I get that right? Yes, you did. Well, actually, Thank I'm not you. the best person to ask because half of these times I'm messing up the girls' names anyway, so. Can you spell Maya? M-H-I apostrophe Y-A. Because I have to put her name every time into Patreon for the, my Patreons to vote. Why? I was watching for eight weeks and I never once tried to spell her name. And then Cash asked me, she's like, do you know how to spell her name? And I could not get it. For me, names, I try to learn as much as I can with the correct spelling, the correct enunciation, because I have a very difficult name too. Want. Yeah, so I feel other people's pain. You know what? I feel like I'm being read and I should do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're not. You're just Rock'em Sakura. You're dumb as a rock. Um, up next, we have Maya Ahmad LePage, and she is in a emerald outfit with a long sort of cape to it. It might just be me, but I think that the outfit is kind of pretty. It is missing a couple of elements, but I think it does look gorgeous on her. Is this 80s to you though? No. Same, not 80s, maybe the hair? The hair for sure. Maybe the lame fabric? Okay, let me point the obvious first. So she talked about how she had a designer that was supposed to make looks for her for the competition, and the designer pulled out on her last minute. And this came out maybe a few days ago, so I can see why now her looks are a little bit lacking compared to the other girls. So, yeah. I like the hair. I thought the color's beautiful, but for me, it's the differentiation of the fabric, right? The bodysuit yeah. is lame, but the train is just regular, non-stretch fabric. When you're looking at it, you can already tell that those are two separate pieces already. Oh, she said she googled RuPaul's DragCon 1980s and that showed up. Is AI-generated art ruining drag? I was just about to say, this is AI, girl, <laughs> because DragCon existed maybe Less than 10 years ago? I definitely feel like the reference she used is AI generated. Yeah, or maybe she just made that up. Remember last time, um, a few weeks ago when they did the pussycat wig and she was describing her look? I'm giving you pussycat wig chop, 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 chop. <laughs> it was like, what the f are you talking about, girl? That was chat GBT <laughs> serving the runway for us. Girl, <laughs> like that's something you say when you know your look sucks and you're just making up. Remember Kenya Michael, she said, I'm walking in this look and I love to walk. What the f I always think about that too. Because I love to walk. Excuse me, we all need to walk. Like, you better learn how to love how to walk. And it's not even like, I love to serve. Yeah. I, I love to serve. I like to walk. I love to breathe on the runway. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, now that I look at it, she's so smooth, the hair is so big, her highlight is so severe that it looks like an AI generated photo. If she got close to her reference, then kudos to her. Next up is Safira serving you 80s. Yes, I do see 80s with the hair. It's very Whitney Houston, very bouncy yes. as if she's going to prom. The silhouette is very 1980s too with the shoulders and then the low drop of the hips and then the poofy dress at the bottom. The cute white shoes matching the top and the buttons. Great. And the chunky jewelry is like very 80s too. I love this. When you said Whitney Houston, I was like, oh, how will I know yeah. era Whitney Houston, perfect, perfect. Also the white with the white buttons, it's so 80s. She hit the mark. The only thing I would have added is a pair of gloves, like an 80s pair of gloves and that's it. I can see that. You would add the gloves. I would take out the jewelry, the necklace. She didn't need it because she already has this beautiful collar with the neckline already. Mmm. Yeah. We're playing customized Barbie over here. Yeah. I love her outfits too. She's constantly serving for me. I have to say for this season, I really have loved a lot of the looks that the girls have brought. Same. It's been very eclectic. Also Nymphia too. Yeah. She adds like 30 points to the whole score. Yeah. <laughs> and Joelle Kim Booster said, thank you for bringing Asian excellence. So both me and your drag. Did you see Untucked and then he came in and then Don had to say who it was? 
Oh, I knew who that was because I saw Fire Island. I also met him back in San Francisco before he like blew up completely. But did you see uh, Fire Island though? I, you did. I did. It was funny though. How do you know it's funny or not if you didn't even watch it? I laughed at it when I was looking at it. When you saw the trailer. Well, I saw the trailer, yeah, but I did watch the movie. I did, I did like put it on so that they would get money from the revenue. Okay, so you were cleaning your house and you had the movie playing in the background. That's exactly what was happening. I was like folding laundry and I was like, <laughs> Oh, morphine. <laughs> the whole bar was like, what the fuck is she wearing <laughs> when she came out? Up next, we have Morphine Love Dion and she is in an outfit which apparently confused the whole bar that Yuhua was in. <laughs> Not confused, they were just like, what the fuck is it? Like, Definitely. a two-piece? The LeMay could be 80s, but there's a lot of elements that don't read 80s to me. And I think part of it was she said the hair was not hers and it made it read Dolly Parton. And my first critique is do not borrow hair from the girl who is constantly coming out bald. Don't do it because like the bang kept falling and stuff too. I'm glad that like a sis is looking out for you and she gave you the wig, but I feel like we could have seen it coming. I feel like she could have put it on and been like, uh-uh, Dolly Parton. There was a viral tweet going around because last week she borrowed the wig from Plain Jane when Plain Jane did share. So there was a tweet going around saying, Plain Jane's share wig has been in the same amount of episodes as Serena Chacha. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the booking fee is higher too. Okay. Um, the look for Morphine Love Dion, I think if it had been a look for like a mini challenge, yeah. it would have been cute if they're like in a performance space or something, but not for 80s. Not my favorite for 80s. I feel like this is a Western outfit she had and someone was like, hey, that kind of reads 80s. Like it could have cowboy boots and a cowboy hat and you could be like, this is Western. It's safe. It's clean, but we could do so much more. I feel like every outfit needs one specific like charm point, And this outfit just doesn't have a specific like thing where you're like, oh, that's like the highlight of this outfit. That's why it reads 80s. Like the highlight of the outfit is the butt cutouts, but it doesn't read 80s. What if she had like a bow, a huge giant bow in that same color that on her hair? 80s. That would have read would... 80s. That would have fixed it. Some purple matching earrings too, like very plasticky instead of the pageant jewels. You know? Yeah! Absolutely! I would have done maybe something different with the makeup too because the makeup the with the blush is a lot higher and some fun orange in there too. Yeah, it's very safe for me, this one. Oh, Michelle is in Jan's look. I know. When they showed Michelle, I was like... Next up is Nymphia serving you a reference of Grace Jones. And this is what we're talking about. She gave us a reference. She gave us an iconic moment. She gave us an 80s look. She gave us a pink carpet look. And this is not just a meet and greet look. I love the hair. It pops out just like the original. I love the wiring of the headpiece at the top that matches the breast as well as her hoo-ha. We see the Keith Haring kind of inspiration too with the print. This is very lovely. It tells us the era. It tells us the theme and it tells us where she's going. There's a the specific point too. of view. One thing I love about this too, is that it also tells us where we're from with the color scheme that she chose. That specific shade of red for the hair and that specific shade of purple reads very 80s. And all of her looks shows the ingenuity of drag. Because a lot of girls, they go to these designers, they pay for blah, 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 blah. And like their things are made from like really expensive materials and war blood. But she looks like she literally used three or four of those like little pot coils that you put on the <laughs> counter so yeah. that it doesn't burn the table. It looks to yeah. me like it's thrifty in a very chic way. She used her resources. That's what you're trying to say instead of saying that she looks cheap. Yeah, yeah, she used her resources. So you like the look, right? Oh, I love the look. When she came out, I was like, ah, oh, Asian people were back in the game. Okay, my favorite look, I mean, our favorite look of the week is Nymphia Wind. And this was no contest. This was absolutely no contest. Oh, let me ask you, what do you think about her doing the Asian accent? Okay, so here's the thing. I feel differently about Nymphia doing the accent than like say like Manila Luzon doing the accent, especially because Nymphia Wind comes from Taiwan, where like that could be the accent of like someone coming into America where like Vanilla grew up in where was it, Boston? Minnesota. <laughs> it seemed less derogatory of Asian people and more like that's an Asian person. For me, when I first watched Manila do it, I wasn't offended because then again, it was like what? I don't know, 12 years ago. But I watching was... it now, I'm like, maybe she shouldn't have it's done cringy. it. Yeah, like it's my really mind have changed and shifted a little bit. Vanilla's felt like yellow face and this 
<laughs> like Nymphia's portrayal felt like more of like this Trisha video. Takanawa. It just felt like a woman. I worked in like office settings with like Asian women who kind of like have that same cadence. I feel like there's always like one Asian lady with a bowl cut in upper management. I feel like it was a reference to that. If Manila Luzon came up to you and she's like, oh, did you, did you write a Nymphia? Did you write a Nymphia Asian accent today? And then she went, like, I would be like, get out of here. Yeah, like, okay, I can see that. Because there was an Asian person on the panel, they were very careful about how they said that they liked it. Oh, you know what I love about Nymphia's response? It was very smart. She said, I just want to do this accent because I want to show what other sounds are out there in this world. I thought that was a very smart, passionate answer. She didn't let them get the best of her. Yeah, absolutely. I've always said this before. The minute you do like an Asian, Asian-y accent and you're Asian on Drag Race, RuPaul and Michelle are like, <laughs> <laughs> they love it. You think so? It. Next time you go back, you uh, you do what Manila did, okay? Okay, but first I have to get on Drag Race first, the regular season. On All Stars, we both have Manila's accent, okay? <laughs> we'll see who <laughs> pulls the yellow face a little bit better. <laughs> okay, let me ask you, if you were to go back for All Stars, what would your talent be? You know, that's a hard one. I, mm, I don't really know. What would your talent be? Um, my talent? Well, I don't want to say it. I have two options in mind. I'm not gonna rap, I'm not gonna sing, I'm not gonna lip sync because I feel like I can do that during the lip sync. I used to be a caricature artist for uh, an amusement park. I feel like I could incorporate that somehow. I would do a spoken word, like, sound healing thing, and then I would be like, never trust a fart. Ding! But then my talent is forgetting my words. Oh, like, uh, mayhem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, did you see the guy who, like, does paintings, but instead of using a brush, he uses his penis? Yeah, maybe you can do something very similar to that. Instead of using, like, a brush, you can use, I don't My know. Tuck. You can use your tuck. Oh, did you see that Instagram handle? Um, I believe it's No Limbs, right? Where they literally do their makeup with, like, no limbs. They do their makeup like that. Maybe you can do something like that, too. But use your mouth, like, holding the brush. She has eaten so much makeup by now because she is constantly opening stuff like with her mouth and with her shoulder. I guarantee you she's eaten at least a pound of powder. Yeah, but props to her. She does an amazing job and she looks really beautiful. And for someone to do their makeup with no limbs, literally, props to that. For sure. What's Amanda's excuse? Nothing. Nothing, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, Rock'em Sakura, thank you so much for giving us your bootleg opinions. And thank you so much for our audience for choosing chaos. Bye. Bye. Hey, squirrel friends, when one video ends, just click on another one. It's called cringe viewing. Go ahead. I support you.